Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg. Today we're checking out what's new with iOS 11 on both the iPhone and the iPad. So iOS 11 is coming to all the devices you see on your screen right now. That now excludes the iPhone 5, 5C, and the iPad 4. So we do lose a few devices with this update. Now we're going to compare this as well to iOS 10 to see some of the visual differences as well as the feature differences so we can get a good look at how this really differs uh, from the previous version. Now of course this is a beta so there will be changes as we go along to the final release and I'll keep you updated with those update videos uh, so make sure you're subscribed to that but first let's get to the iPhone so starting with the lock screen there's a big change to the way you invoke the notification shade so you swipe up to get to notifications now if you remember with the uh, iOS 10 you swiped down from the top which was kind of a reach so I actually like this change they've also changed the keypad and some of the text so you can see bolder text as well as different buttons They've also changed the way the music app works on the lock screen. So instead of taking up the entire lock screen and blocking you from your notifications, you now get this tile and widget which allows you to control your media while still accessing or receiving your notifications. One of the other visual changes comes down to the cellular reception. So instead of the dots, we're now back to bars, which I think takes up a bit less real estate. They've also made a slight tweak to the battery icon in the upper right corner. iOS 11 also shortens the dock a bit by eliminating the app tags that are just below them. So any apps that are within the dock lose their names. They've also made a big change to the notification shade. So when you bring this down, you see your most recent notifications toward the top and you can swipe up to see all of your previous notifications. Now, looking at this, it actually looks like you've locked the device because it basically takes you to the lock screen interface, but it's not locked. So I can just swipe up to dismiss it or hit the home key to get back to my home screen. Now, just like on the lock screen, you can swipe left to get to your camera app, which I think is handy, or swipe right to get to your uh, widgets, which is not new. The other weird thing right now is that you can't swipe to dismiss notifications and I'm not sure if this is just a beta quirk or a design change. They've also made some changes to the iOS 11 animation so when you open up an app you can see the app sort of expands out from its borders to fill the screen and there's more motion in the backdrop. One of the biggest visual changes with iOS 11 is the new control center. So if you remember with iOS 10 we get three pages to swipe across on. We had home kit, media controls, and our control center for vital functions. But now we get a lot more all in one scrollable page which is highly customizable. So my control center has been loaded with most of the features you can add to the control center and I'll get to that in just a moment but I just want to show you some of them. So for example we have this platter up here as Apple calls it so I can 3D touch to get to some of my connectivity options which includes airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, hotspot and airdrop. We also have our media controls up here so I can play pause media without having to jump into the panel but I can expand it out as well. We also have our do not disturb settings so again you can turn these on and off our rotation lock we do get these new animations as well our brightness controls and volume slider within the brightness control if you 3d touch on it we get to our night shift control we have screen mirroring so some of these do have features you can toggle on and off uh, but you can also expand it out to see exactly what devices you want to screen mirror to we have our flashlight so we can quickly turn it on but 3d press to get to our intensity slider we also have our calculator so we can expand that out to see last results some of our camera settings which does include portrait mode uh, we have our home kit controls. We have screen recording, which is a new feature here. So I can start screen recording what I'm doing here. Uh, and we can also enable the microphone. So if we turn on the microphone, we can record both audio and video at the same time. And you can see up top, we have an indication that the screen is being recorded right now. And so if we stop that up here and we can go ahead and listen to it by tapping on the notification. So if we turn on the microphone, we can record both audio and video at the same time. One of my favorite features is Apple TV controls, so I can quickly bring up my remote for my Apple TVs, and I can select which one I want toward the top here. I really like that. We also have our Notes app, so we have quick access to some of our Notes shortcuts and quick actions. We also have our stopwatch, uh, voice recording, battery save remote, so we can quickly toggle that on and off and we can even change our text size. Another new feature is do not disturb while driving. That's a feature you can add to the control center. So if you enable this, this will automatically turn off notifications while you're in a car and it determines that based on your geolocation, Bluetooth connection, and more. Now, as I mentioned, this is highly customizable. So we have to go to our settings panel. You can see right now that the settings panel does get a new look with bolder text and font. And we're gonna go to control center and under control center, you can see I've basically clicked on everything except for a few things. Uh, so I can rearrange them to reorder them if I want. 
I can also unselect them or select them if I want to add them or not. Now you're limited to what you can rearrange. So for example, all these controls up top are in their fixed location. The controls down here you can rearrange. It would be nice if you could do so within the panel itself, but you have to go here to rearrange them. They've also made some changes to the recent apps viewer. So you can see with iOS 10, we get our home screen toward the right, but that's been eliminated with iOS 11. Again, we can swipe across and swipe up to dismiss apps. And then when we jump back to the home screen, you can see the animation is a bit different. In terms of bringing up search, swiping down again on the home screen brings you to the same interface. Now, if you swipe over to the widget panel, for the most part, it looks the same, but you can see the date and time is now missing. And we no longer can swipe down to get to search. So that has been removed. You have to go up to the top to activate it. Siri also gets a new look. What's the weather like tomorrow? The weather's like nice good weather tomorrow. up tomorrow up to 73, up to 73 degrees, degrees, and degrees and sunny. So you can see the interface here is more of a floating tile as opposed to this wide full screen view on the right. And you can also see we have a different sort of waveform for the Siri button down below. Now this may relate to the iPhone 8, which is supposed to have an in-screen home button and fingerprint scanner, but we'll see. Siri can also help with translation. How do you say, what's the weather like in German? Wie ist das Wetter? Siri does pick up text-to-speech under accessibility, so if we go to accessibility, we can go to a Siri section and enable type to Siri. So now if we bring up Siri, we can actually type it in. Siri also gets a new voice, but right now it seems to only work for me on my iPad. What's the weather like tomorrow? It should be nice tomorrow up to 73 degrees and sunny. They've also added some features for screenshots. So as I take a screenshot here, you can see it minimizes to the lower left corner. I can tap on this to edit the uh, image and choose whether I want to save it or not. So otherwise it won't save automatically. iOS 11 also picks up some new keyboard features. So we can select a right justified or left justified keyboard. And if you want to exit it, just tap the arrow and it goes back to full screen. This also allows us to quickly jump to keyboard settings, which wasn't available from the shortcut before. In terms of HomeKit, it does pick up the ability to add speakers. So we have a speaker API, but one of the more interesting features is the way you can add new accessories to HomeKit, which iPhone hasn't done before. So if we go to add accessory, we can actually add via a QR code or NFC. So that's really interesting because Apple hasn't used NFC before for anything beyond Apple Pay. We also get some new features for live photos. So if you shoot a live photograph, one of the things you can do here is uh, reposition the timeline to change the cover photo for the live photo. So this is now the cover photo versus the default one, which is toward the middle. Uh, what you can also do is add an effect. So if we swipe up here, we can add any number of effects. So we can go with the standard live photo loop, bounce, and long exposure, and you can get those little previews within each. So if I choose loop here, you can see it's sort of stabilized. That's kind of a neat effect. So you get this weird depth effect. That's actually kind of neat. We also have bounce, which replays the clip backwards and forwards instead of just repeating it. We also get some enhancements with the messaging app. One of them is some new effects. So for example, we're just gonna write test here. And then if we 3D press on the send button, we get to new options under screen. So with screen, we have two of them. One of them is send with echo. And then we also have send with spotlight. So we're gonna send this one off. And you can see we also get a sound effect with that. They've also cleaned up the app interface. So down below, we'll see all of the available iMessaging apps, which we can bring up here. So for example, we can bring up iTunes by tapping on it. So we get this interface, which we can expand out, or you can go right to the app store to install new ones. You can also tap and hold here to reposition them if you want. One of the new tricks with the camera app in iOS 11 is the ability to recognize QR code. So as soon as they bring up the camera app and scan a code, or just look at the code, it automatically brings up the shortcut. So in this case, it launches into an article on Safari. We also get some more storage management options. So if we go to general and go to iPhone storage, uh, we see a breakdown of our usage on the device and we have two new features we can enable. Auto delete old conversations from iMessages. Some of those can really take up space. And then we can offload unused apps. So if we enable this, this will delete apps we're not using while retaining the information from those apps so you can quickly relaunch and reinstall them. Now they have made a ton of changes to some of the apps. So for example, if we go to the calculator app, you can see it gets a new icon and a completely new interface. They've also redesigned the app store and the iTunes store and they also 
also get their new icons as well. If we go into the App Store, a pretty big change in terms of the layout. Now we have these new tabs and you can see they have made some changes to areas like updates. So you can see again the left justified bolder font in the upper left corner. Uh, we also see replacements for some of these tabs such as apps instead of top charts. Uh, search, if we go to search here, uh, very different type of search. This looks a lot more like Apple Music than the previous version. In terms of the Today tab, this is designed to highlight some of the major new apps so you can jump into them to find out more about them. So you'll see some write-ups about it along with previews of the gameplay. If we go to the Apps tab, again, the information is much less dense. You can scroll left and right or up and down. Uh, the font is bolder and bigger. And otherwise, you can see that it's broken down by specific categories. So you can scroll through it or go to the section with the top categories highlighted right here. The app pages also get a complete redesign with bolder text, easier to read fonts, and more. You can see the layout has also been tweaked. Uh, one of the things they like to do here is emphasize gameplay, so you'll see those videos play automatically as you scroll through the uh, interface, and of course you can swipe left and right. Although the iTunes Store does get a new icon, it doesn't get a complete redesign. There's some tweaks here and there, so you'll see some of the icons are a bit different, they're a bit darker, and some of them are a bit larger and repositioned, but otherwise it's the same interface. One of the important new apps is Files. So this is a file manager that is somewhat similar to the iCloud Drive file we had from iOS 10. But this time, it allows you to access files on the device itself, not just within iCloud. This also allows you to access third-party files on the device. But unfortunately, it's not quite as feature-packed as you would expect for a file manager. And that's because it really restricts what you can see on this phone. So for example, I can't just go to all my photo files. I have to go to the app to see them. So if I go to on my iPhone, you can see there is nothing there at all. Uh, I can see recently deleted. I can tag files. And of course, I can search them. I can also see recent files here as well. So with drag and drop, just tap and hold, and then what you can do here is tap as many files as you need, and then you can drag and drop it to one of these tags if you want, or to one of the other uh, locations for your files. Unfortunately, it's not going to let me scroll up here, but you get the idea. So when it comes to Safari, it looks like the URL bar is a bit bigger with iOS 11, but really the major differences come down to settings. So if we dig into settings and go to Safari, we'll see some significant changes here. Uh, the big changes really come down to security and privacy. And one of the features we have now is try to prevent cross site tracking. So this prevents things like Facebook from tracking your activity on other websites. Now it says try, so it doesn't mean it's going to be successful in all cases. But we also get a few other related features here, such as asking websites not to track me, so you can turn that on and off. It's off by default, but prevent cross-site tracking is on by default, so I thought that was interesting. You can also limit camera and microphone access, so that's another new feature. One of the other new features is automatically saving offline content. Uh, so if you enable this, this will automatically save all reading lists uh, from your iCloud account so you can read it later. Podcast app also gets a redesign and if we take a look at this it looks very similar to Apple Music and the tabs along the bottom have also been redone so we have Listen Now instead of Unplayed, uh, we have Library instead of My Podcast, uh, we have Browse instead of Featured or Top of the Charts and then we have Search. So if we go to Search we can search for all podcasts or just My Podcast so again very similar to Apple Music. In terms of the player here you can see the interface is also a bit different more of a floating card as opposed to a full screen app. This also allows you to scroll through up next as opposed to jumping to the list to see previous episodes. The calendar app also picks up bolder fonts, a little less red, a little more black. In the notes app, they've redesigned the tool belt and added a few new features. One of them is a grid for uh, creating a graph, but another feature they've added here uh, is the ability to scan a document. So if you go to iOS 10, you can see there's fewer features here. So if you scan a document, we're going to bring up the camera and then we should be able to scan a document. So let me raise the phone here to scan it. So once it scans the document, you can resize the corners like so, and you can adjust them independently. So if you have a, a angled shot, you can do that. And then we're gonna use that scan. And you can go ahead and continue adding to your document by scanning page after page. So when it comes to settings, again, we're seeing that bolder font that's left justified along with our search box just below it. In terms of the settings panels, you can see some changes to some of the iconography, such as the Siri icon. One of the new control panels with iOS 11 is Emergency SOS. So this allows you to assign emergency contacts. We've seen this feature before, but new is Auto Call. So you can turn this feature on and off, but basically this will allow you to automatically dial an emergency contact if you hit the sleep-wake power button five times in a row. 
Of course, there's interface changes throughout. So for example, the keypad on iOS 11 is more space versus the grid on iOS 10. So because accounts and passwords have been moved to their own category, if you go to the mail app, you can see that the accounts tab is gone. And so you get the rest of the email settings tabs. So getting to the iPad, very similar to the iPhone, you swipe up to get to your notifications, swipe to the right to get to your widgets, and swipe to the left to get to your camera. Once again, you can't swipe on the notifications to dismiss them, but you can clear them all. You can also swipe up from the bottom to get to your control center, so we can change our brightness and other features as well. You can also long press on these to expand them out, so you don't need a 3D touch for that to work. But if we go to the home screen, one major change here is the new dock. So this dock is very similar to the dock on uh, Mac OS. So this allows you to add as many apps as you want just by dragging and dropping them to the dock. And then you can reposition and it resizes the whole thing depending on how many apps you have. Now I haven't filled it up to see how many can hold, uh, but we may do that in the final release. So this dock is really designed to improve multitasking and productivity on the iPad. So for example, I can bring up an app here and swipe up again to get back to the dock. So if I want to open up Safari, that allows me to quickly jump to it. Now, what it can also do is allow me to open up apps side by side. So for example, with YouTube, just drag it to the side and it pops it out in this sort of viewer. So if I let it go, I get this floating screen which I can reposition and continue interacting with apps side by side. But I can also dock it just by swiping down again and it docks to the left or right side. I can also reverse that again by swiping down, move it to the side, swipe again, and there we go. And we can resize it to whatever we want. So this interface for the most part replaces slide over. So if you remember with iOS 10, you swiped in from the edge to invoke the split screen mode. Now you lose that, but you do get a feature that's somewhat similar. So if we bring up another app here, so let's open up YouTube uh, and uh, bring it down to the window view. If you tuck it to the side like so, you can bring it back by swiping it. The iPad also gets a unified control center and recent apps launcher. So the control center is along the right and all of our recent apps are along the left. And one of the cool things it does is retain the split screen mode uh, for certain apps that you've recently accessed. So for example, I can see my split screen mode here. So if I tap on it, it opens up both of them side by side. But again, I can swipe up to get to my dock and continue swiping up all the way to get to the control center. Now to close these out, just tap and hold until you get the X and it closes them for you. The iPad also picks up a clever new keyboard. This allows you to quickly get to the secondary character on the key just by swiping down. Now just like the iPhone, the iPad also gets the Files app and what you can do here is long press to get to a preview of the files that are currently open. So checking out the Files app on the iPad, it's very similar to that on the iPhone. I can see my iCloud Drive, I can see the files on my iPad, at least the ones that it lets me see, and then recently deleted as well as my tags if you use that. So when it comes to dragging and dropping, this is where the iPad has an advantage over the iPhone, and that's because drag and dropping is system-wide. So let me show you exactly what that means. Uh, with the iPhone, all I can do is drag and drop within the app, but now I can leave the app and drag and drop items to somewhere else. So if I go to Pages here, I can see some of the apps I can drag and drop. So I can drag and drop one, or I can add multiples just by tapping them like so. Now I can hit the Home key, and as you can see, my files are still attached to my fingers. So I can now open up another app, as clumsy as this is, and drag and drop it. So for example, if I want to compose a message, this will add those files to the message. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this look at iOS 11. Of course, I will be releasing new videos with each beta if there are major changes to keep you updated. And then we'll do a final walkthrough with the final release this fall. So stay tuned for that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to let me know. And I'll see you again in my next video.